welcome this is a truth about parenting video that i'm doing it's now the 27th of december so christmas has come and gone for 2021 and i just want to talk about uh, fussy eaters so my son uh, when he was a baby uh, took to weaning like uh, a fish to water he was ready for it and we all we checked with the doctor first because he was born premature when we could start giving him solids and when he gave us some thumbs up, we started on baby rice, um, um, uh, what are they called, um, rats, rats, these, I think that's right, anyway, <laughs> biscuits, baby biscuits, uh, biscottis, and I would also make my own like, pureed food out of like sweet potato and carrots, um, uh, uh, sausage mash, uh, um, cottage pies and shepherd's pies, and just anything that we could blitz down and make it into food that I could eat. And as you go and you make it a bit more lumpier than when you first start, because then they start getting their teeth, and um, well, that's the that's the idea anyway. I, when I worked in a call centre, I was taking calls on a baby product with Avent, where I would give troubleshooting advice um, if a parent ran up and had a problem with a product that they purchased and we would work with a midwife uh, to help us take calls and the midwife told us that when her daughter was born that she was born with a tooth and I couldn't believe it so they can grow the tooth early on but to the best safe side is wait until they're about six months between four and six months and see if they're ready for to be weaned and I, w and I do believe in baby led weaning which if I do have any more kids I would definitely do because it is worth it it helps use their teeth, it helps strengthen their teeth um, so when Henry was baby I would I would make my own pure sometimes I bought jars from Boots and sometimes they did a deal on them but uh, I always used to make my own and what you can do is get an ice pack box, an you know, ice container, um, fill it up, and fill it up with baby food, stick it in the freezer, cover it over, stick it in the freezer and that's your dinners for your baby. I used to do that a lot. And there are special containers that you can buy as well for, to put baby food in. But if you don't want to spend money on, the, on those containers, then you're using an ice, um, uh, ice filler to uh, put baby food in and store it. Just put on it what, when the food was done, no one has got to be used by. Um, so now he's got quite fussy. He doesn't eat his veg, but if it's cut up, um, sometimes he will eat it with encouragement and it just be things like carrots or sweet potato. Um, and you can't go wrong with them. And uh, he used to prefer actually sweet potato to uh, white potato he absolutely loved it and I but so I'm the same I love sweet potato uh, I think it's a great uh, alternative to potatoes and the, and I find that they cook a lot quicker than white potatoes so you know definitely and I, I and I'd love to make a sweet potato soup because I, I think I made that once and it was delicious uh, and you can also like if you're a Sunday lunch or a Christmas dinner mash it up and put it as part of their dinner for Christmas and it's just well worth it and then depending on how old they are if they, if they, if they can't chew really well then try and give them so you give them meat for the protein if that's if, the, if that's the way you want to go it's up to you I'm not going to encourage anybody to be vegan if they don't want to be or anything like that it's all what's what's really good for your baby and every child is different so you know you can do what I did. I would I would mush it up and mush it down with a bit of gravy, so I can have gravy. Mush it around and mix it all together, and then you've got and make the feet and the other the feet the meat so soft that it falls off the bone, um, and then blitz it in with the potato and gravy, you know. Um, and, and I will do, when I get my own place again, we'll show examples of how to make easy baby food. It's something that I really like to do, so I just remind myself to do that. Um, 
and so yeah, make your, try and make your own baby food. And yes, yeah, so I have some brilliant books, and I will find. I'll see if I've still kept the ones that I used for my son, because they are brilliant. And I will try and see if I could do a printable um, uh, to do weaning. Um, I will write that down uh, just now. Um, so uh, do a video on making baby food and create principle to help too so I've put them down so uh, and then the other thing is about set times so uh, when Henry to, so how we started was I would, how, how I started more um, I would give him uh, so start weaning him from breakfast time so I did it gradually first week was after his first milk in the morning and that's the other thing the more food you give the less milk they need so and we and we kind of got it wrong uh, to begin with because we thought that we have to give, should give him more milk than food but no it's the other way around as soon as they start weaning you wean them off the milk um, and that goes for you know breastfeeding or formula. We use formula um, for most of Henry's uh, um, babyhood uh, because he just got to use the bottle. And he and I wish I'd have gone back now because he was latching on. I just I I was all the figures of thumbs and found it really hard to do. Um, but I still gave my milk. I expressed it, and so he can have it in his bottle. So he would have, when he was first born, he had part my milk, part formula milk. Because um, the, uh, oh, what's it called? I can't even remember it. But the very first milk that you produce is what really good for premature babies. Colostrum, that's it. Colostrum is really good for babies. So as soon as you start producing colostrum, um, express, even if you can't feed your baby directly um, because it's really good for their uh, the first taste of milk you know and really good with their development um, so you know so when it came to reason so we uh, for example so he, my son always wakes up now even now early so as soon as he got up around about four o'clock well we'd give him uh, do some baby food and then a small amount of milk uh, and it would be, uh, you can get baby porridge. Baby por porridge was a game changer. Uh, so, and, and even normal porridge, as long as it splits down, and you can still add formula milk to that if you can't add, really, if you're not expressing anymore. Um, splits it down, um, really good for baby development, and baby rice. So that's where we started. And finally rusks, that's what I was thinking of. Friday's rusks, they are brilliant um, biscuit, and I would sometimes mash one of them in as well. And he enjoyed, um, you know, that breakfast. The other one was a uh, wheat mix with uh, and porridge as well with chopped up banana. He used to absolutely love that, and uh, he does have a bit of an off and on relationship with bananas because one minute he lo loves them, and then the next minute he doesn't like them. So it's something that he ha he has to fancy to have it. Um, but never just completely excluded from the diet and what we've started to do is give Henry a multivitamin to help to make sure he's got the nutrients and minerals that he needs um, but you know he is getting there and with kids it has to be done often very slowly and hide it the best you can if they still pick it out then you know at least you try but always still put it on their plate uh, I'm guilty sometimes of, of Given it, but you've got to be persistent when it comes to their diet, um, and it is very important. And having set times, I would say be flexible and have windows. So between, uh, say, so Henry would go up about four to uh, say six. That's when we would do his breakfast and his first milk. Then lunchtime it would be between uh, say eleven to uh, one o'clock and then from four o'clock 
to 6 o'clock it would be when you would have his evening meal. But do it guys Steve. I, we put, I started when he was uh, in the mornings and I gradually then um, gave him lunch and then gave him dinner and reducing the milk. And it also saves you having to do the midnight feed as well. So that's another one that needs to be cut out so they can sleep all the way through. Now Henry as a baby, he did sleep all the way through from, from early on. And it's only when he started teething that his sleep started to get broken up. And I used to be really worried uh, to make sure he was alive, but he did. Because uh, they said that babies need to be fed two hours. Well, every two hours. Well, not in Henry's case. Uh, it, uh, for me, it's all about what suited him, him at the time and uh, when he was hungry enough. So, you know, just how I would have windows of time rather than having a set time each day. Uh, and it has made a difference in doing that. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, what I want to talk about in this video. I hope that you find them helpful. If there are things that uh, I've, I've not included in these videos and you would like me to include me, then let me know. And please subscribe if you like watching my videos. It's just great to see me to get feedback. And uh, remember, if you want to see more, then you do need to subscribe and then press the bell thingy. But um, well, that's my video for today. I really hope that you find that out so far helpful. I hope you all had a good Christmas and I wish you a very good Happy New Year. So take care and I'll see you soon.